Hello, during this session, I'm going to be talking about the Hertzsprung Russell diagram, a diagram that all astrophysicists come to know and love. And I'm going to extend some thinking about main sequence, main sequence stars, and introduce the ideas of red giants and white dwarfs. So, a bit of astrophysics thinking first. So, from the measurements of intensity and distance, the luminosity of a star can be calculated. So that's how bright a star is. At the same time, by observing the peak wavelength and temperature, uh, the temperature can be calculated using Wien's law. So if we have the brightness of the star and the temperature of a star, and we plot these things together, we get something which is known as the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. This is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Now, uh, this is something which you're going to need to be able to uh, recreate at will. And so you need to think about, have some understanding of uh, the range of both luminosities. And here is luminosity compared to our sun. So that means our sun is slap bang in the middle. And also the um, locations of these different features, these different blobs on the diagram. So let's talk about this diagram in a bit more detail. So first of all, we have the main sequence. Now, the main sequence is this long strip of stars. And what it actually describes is a typical hydrogen burning star. For most of a star's lifetime, it sits there burning hydrogen through a process of uh, nuclear fusion, giving off lots of energy, and we see here that the most luminous stars are unsurprisingly the hottest stars. So that's the main sequence. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is something known as the giants. Okay. So we have the uh, red giants and the super red giants, which I'm going to talk about now. So what a red giant is. Uh, when a star runs out of fuel, uh, what it does is it swells, so increasing its luminosity. What really happens is that at the center, the hydrogen uh, fuel runs out, and that causes an internal collapse of the center. Now, this uh, leads to an increased fusion rate in the wider shells, causing them to expand. And this expansion takes energy away, so cools the surface so it looks more red. And the star ends up expanding greatly, so it becomes giant and also reddened in luminosity, but tends to have a, a much cooler surface temperature. So this is known as a red giant. And that's uh, the bottom uh, blob of stars we see on the hertzsprung russell diagram we also have what's known as the supergiants now what happens with the supergiants these are more massive stars so they're going to have a, a mass of four times the mass of our, solar, our sun and what can happen is that they can end up igniting even heavily in nuclear so therefore not only will we have uh, hydrogen burning but we might have uh, helium fusing as well and we might have a central carbon and oxygen core, and these stars can become known as super red giants. So that means they go through the same process, uh, but uh, heavier elements will start to fuse uh, because there's enough mass to reach those higher temperatures, and they become super giants. So that's the end for more massive stars. So we've got giants, and we've got super giants. We also have white dwarfs. So what is a white dwarf, you may be asking? Well, for uh, a small, dense star that has run out of all its fuel, then what happens is after that, it kind of goes out. And what we have is just the final shining from the residual heat. So the white dwarf uh, is uh, no longer a, I guess, a star which is giving out light because of uh, the nuclear fusion taking place. It's just a hot object 
that is slowly cooling away and that is a white dwarf and eventually this whiteness dims to a point when it's just a, a brown dwarf and it can hardly be seen. So we have white dwarfs, uh, supergiants, giants and the main sequence. Uh, another note here on the hertzsprung russell diagram is that we have temperature going along the axes. Now you've got to remember on this graph we have going from highest temperature down to lowest temperature. And if we follow the main sequence, what actually goes if we go from one end, the top end of the main sequence, to the bottom end of the main sequence, uh, this follows uh, the Harvard spectral sequence. So if you remember from a previous session, uh, the letters which are used to describe certain stars, and it follows, oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. And that Harvard spectral sequence could, in fact, be used to replace the temperature for that axis. Now, there's also a mass luminosity relationship, which I'm going to take this moment to talk about. Uh, we've discovered that uh, for main sequence stars, and this is not really that much of a surprise, uh, the more massive the star is, the brighter the star is. And it's a fact uh, now been identified, and the, uh, there's always been some argument about this exact number, but the number which was uh, recommended to be used by the IB is now that uh, the luminosity of a star is proportional to the mass of the star to the power of 3.5. Now, this can be used to identify some more information. If we think about the luminosity of just being the amount of energy released divided by the period of time, and assuming that the energy all comes from converting the total mass of the star, so we use E equals mc squared, that means that mc squared divided by uh, the time taken is proportional to mass to the power of 3.5. We can capture masses on both sides. Uh, and we know that c squared is a constant, so we can ignore that. So therefore, uh, t, uh, which is the amount of time the star is converting energy, is existing, is proportional to 1 over the mass to the power 2.5. So this tells us the greater the mass of the star, the shorter the lifetime. And later on, I'll be talking about the rock and roll lifestyle of the massive stars that burn bright but die young. For now, we can put this to use in making some calculations about how long a star will exist. So, if a star of one solar mass will spend 10 to the 10 years in the main sequence, we can think about how long will a star with 10 times the mass spend on the main sequence using that idea of proportionality. So, 10 times the 10 years times 1 divided by 10 to the power of 2.5 gives me the typical lifespan of a star which is 10 times more massive is obviously much much shorter and therefore what we've got was that 3.2 times 10 to the 1 2 3 4 5 6 3.2 times 10 to the 6 years a much shorter lifespan so remember, the hertzsprung russell diagram is something that you have to recreate. So make sure you go over it and understand uh, the locations of all the components and make sure that you can accurately label the axes with numbers which make sense. So go back and double check that and then we can think about how the mass of the star is related to the luminosity.